If you could look into the future, do you think you'd be able to understand it? I mean, multiple books have been written about people who catch a glimpse of the future, but still are unable to make sense of it. I think of Paul Atreides and Frank Herbert's Dune, who has visions of the future of his planet, but those visions are incomplete and open to interpretation. Or perhaps more famously in the, the short story made movie Minority Report. The pre-crime division of the police department utilizes people who have the ability to see the future, called precogs, to prevent crimes before they happen. The story is meant to cause us to question our ability to predict the future, as there are times when the precogs have disagreeing interpretations of an event, and so they have to issue what they call a minority report. Throughout the Bible, the Lord gave some men and women the ability to see visions and hear messages that would help God's people navigate their present and future. The first of these biblical prophecies is actually a genre of its own called messianic prophecy, of which we find the first in Genesis 3.15 as the Lord tells Adam and Eve that he will put enmity between the serpent and the woman, between her offspring and his offspring. Offspring. An offspring of the woman will bruise the serpent's head and the serpent will bruise his heel. From this point on, the people of God yearn for their deliverer, someone who will be anointed by God to crush the head of their ancient foe. When Eve gives birth, it seems that she's, she's holding out this hope when she says, I've gotten a man with the help of the Lord. But the baby that she had received would only add to their sorrows as he would grow not to be a man that crushed death and the devil, but would be a purveyor of death and evil, killing his own brother. In Genesis 5, a, a man named Lamech holds out this hope when his son is born as he gives him the name Noah, saying, out of the ground that the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. But Noah was not the one either. Even with humanity starting over and descending from, from this new man, sin, death, and the devil were unable to be abolished. You see, when, when Joseph, one of Abraham's descendants, Noah's descendants, was made a, a ruler of Egypt, rescuing his family from starvation and preventing global disaster, seemingly fulfilling the promise to Abraham that, that his seed would be a blessing to the nations, that, that there may have been hope that, that Joseph was the serpent crusher, but his father, Jacob, prophesied, saying that the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until he to whom it belongs shall come, and the obedience of the nations shall be his. You see, for almost 1,700 years, the people of God waited for him to come whom the scepter belongs to, who would call the nations to obedience like one of those scratch-off hidden pictures that my daughter loves to play with. Each prophecy from that point on was a, was a scratch, allowing them to see a piece of who this person would be. The prophet Micah told them from where he would come, saying in Micah 5, 2, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 29, 18 told them of his ministry of healing. The deaf will hear, the blind will see. The prophet Zechariah in Zechariah 12, 10 told them of how he would be rejected. And again, Isaiah in Isaiah 53 told them of how he would suffer. He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. You see, when Jesus came in his incarnation and lived, died, rose from the dead, and ascended to heaven, he fulfilled these and more than 300 other prophecies in the Old Testament. Still, other prophecies are waiting to be fulfilled on his return as he establishes his eternal kingdom and brings all nations to obedience. This is one of the few but most important messianic prophecies that we wait for. He reigns in heaven, but we long for the day when he will reign on earth. And so, in the words of another prophet, a messianic prophet, we might say, the apostle John, we cry out with him as he says in Revelation, praying, come, Lord Jesus.